Welcome and thank you for standing by. All participants are in a listen-only mode until the question-answer session of today's call. I'd like to remind everyone that today's call is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect. It's my pleasure to turn the call over to Deborah Rivera. You may now begin, ma'am. Thank you so much. Good afternoon and welcome to our webinar event on Discovering Race and Ethnicity Data on data.census.gov. My name is Deborah Rivera, and today I am joined by my colleague, Jessica Barnett, and today we will be providing support for our speaker by monitoring the chat to answer some questions and sending you some helpful links. Uh, before I hand things off to our presenter, Tyson Weister, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. Today's session is focused on how to find data by race and ethnicity on data.census.gov. We will not be covering the topic of race and ethnicity overall, and we will not be able to answer specific questions about the collection or tabulation of the data. We will be providing some links to resources where you will be able to find information related to those topics, but again, just to be clear, we will be focusing on how to navigate the platform to find data. Now moving on, and this is very important, um, if you have chosen to stream the audio of today's call via your computer, meaning if you did not dial in using a telephone, you will not be able to queue up to ask questions via the phone line during the Q&A period. The audio streaming link is a one-way audio option only. So if you would like to ask a question via the phone, we encourage you to dial in with the telephone number and passcode and we will be putting that in the chat a couple of times for your convenience. A lot of you may choose to stream the audio through your computers, which is, of course, perfectly fine. However, this means that we are anticipating a high number of questions that will come in via the chat. This means that we may not have an opportunity to get to all of the questions, but we will be, again, providing you with contact information so you can reach out to us after the webinar if we are unable to answer your question throughout the event. As always, we are recording this webinar and along with all of the supporting materials, including the slide deck, the video recording, and the transcript, this is all going to be posted on the Census Academy site. So keep an eye out for that link in the chat. Now one last thing here before we get started. Once we conclude today's session, our evaluation survey will pop up on your screen as you exit the WebEx event. Um, we would greatly appreciate it if you could take just a moment and fill it out and submit. Um, you can tell us how we can improve our webinars and, of course, topics that you would like to see us cover in future webinars. And with that, again, thank you so much for joining us today. We truly hope that you enjoy today's training. And I would now like to introduce our speaker, Mr. Tyson Weister. Thank you, Tyson. Great. Thank you, Deb, and thank you all so much for joining today's webinar on discovering race and ethnicity data on data.census.gov. Our goal for you all today is to walk out with a basic understanding of race and ethnicity, how we collect the information, and how it appears in Census Bureau data tables. And once we've covered that, we're really going to focus today on a deep dive on data.census.gov race and ethnicity data through live demonstrations. We'll show you how to pull up basic information, starting with the population distribution by race and by ethnicity. And then we'll show you how you can zero in on a particular population group and look at population totals and characteristics for that group using a variety of search options. And with that, we'll go ahead and dig right into the content um, for race and ethnicity. Uh, as you may know, the Census Bureau collects race, race and ethnicity data according to Office of Management and Budget, o, or OMB standards. So this means that we collect data, and it's defined by OMB, with race and ethnicity being two separate concepts. We'll talk more about that later and show you the numbers on the live site as well. Part of our data collection is that it's based on self-identification. This means that the Census Bureau does not tell respondents which boxes to check or what to write in any free-form text 
field, people report their race and ethnicity according to what they identify with. And people may identify with one or more race groups. We'll talk about that in just a moment. For more detailed information on race and ethnicity definitions, we encourage you to visit the links at the bottom of this slide. When it comes to race in Census Bureau data tables, you'll find that there are some basic race categories you'll see. The Office of Management and Budget requires a minimum of five categories. So we have data for white, black, or African American, American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, and Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander. The Census Bureau is also allowed a sixth category for some other race in our data collection. And then keep in mind that people can identify with one or more races. So the way that you'll see this broken out in our data tables frequently are each of these six groups, people who fall into that category and, and identify with that race alone, and then a seventh category for two or more races. There are many different ways that you can slice and dice race and ethnicity and look at it in different data tables, but these seven categories are one of the primary ways that you'll see it in Census Bureau data tables on a basic level, and 100% of the population falls in one of these seven categories. Also in our data tables are the two basic ethnic group categories, Hispanic or Latino and not Hispanic or Latino, just as in race, 100% of the population belongs to one of, or one of two of these categories. Um, and race and ethnicity are two distinct concepts. So people of Hispanic origin can be of any race group. We'll take a look at this in just a moment on the live site. So let's go over to data.census.gov and show the distribution of population in the United States, broken out by race, broken out by ethnicity, and then we'll show how we even have some data cross-tabulated for ethnicity by race. Going to the live site, we do recommend using Google Chrome. And you want to go to data.census.gov. Uh, Google Chrome is the preferred browser for our site. There's a couple different ways you can go about searching, but for the purposes of this webinar, we're going to use the advanced search. It's the option that allows you the full set of search criteria, depending on the level of detail you want in race and ethnicity. So clicking on advanced search, looking at population distribution by race and ethnicity, we're going to use the filters here on the left-hand side, and I'm going to click on topic and drill into the level of detail that I desire. Once you click topics, you'll notice race and ethnicity. And we want overall information for race and ethnicity, so I'm just going to check the box at the top that says race and ethnicity. A checkbox is always a final selection, and any words and phrases without checkboxes tell you when you click here, you'll get more detailed options to choose from on the right-hand side. Once we're happy with our selection, race and ethnicity, I'll click search in the lower right. And we're primarily going to look at tables today, so I'm going to drill right into tables in the upper left. As you'll notice, there are 1,896 tables. We did request kind of the full breadth of information on race and ethnicity. Um, there are ways that we can drill that down. We'll go through that in some of the other examples. What we get here on the left-hand side are the top table recommendations. You'll notice some sex by age tables broken out for different population groups. And you can simply scroll through this list of tables. Um, it loads the first 10, so you can click the Load More button. After sex by age, I see a set of tables for median sex by age. And then right after that, I see probably what it is that I want is a table that says race. B02001 is the table ID. You can simply click on the left, and then it loads the information on the right-hand side of your screen. There are arrows in some tables that allow you to expand or collapse the level of detail. I'm just going to do that a couple of times different ways of showing the data as I explain things in the data tables as we move along. 
So I'm actually going to decrease the level of detail for two or more races. And these were the seven categories that I was talking about in the PowerPoint slide. So what we can see here is based on the 2019 American Community Survey one-year estimates, there were approximately 328,239,000 people. And then out of that population, they fall into one of these seven race categories. Now we wanted also the population distribution by ethnicity. So I'll click on load more and kind of browse through some of these different table titles, uh, giving them as I scroll through the list. And I will see Hispanic origin. Uh, the first table that I see in my result list, Hispanic or Latino origin by specific origin, B03001. We'll click on that table title. And I'm going to simplify the view here for just a moment. And here we can see, again, what we were talking about with race and ethnicity being two distinct concepts. Again, you have the total population. That's the same number that we just saw on the race table. And then it breaks out the total population across these two ethnic categories, Hispanic or Latino and not Hispanic or Latino. This particular table even lets you drill into more detail for Hispanic or Latino if you want to know particular detailed Hispanic or Latino groups. That information is also provided. These are all subgroups of the overall Hispanic or Latino ethnicity category. And then a final way that you could go about looking at population distribution is to cross-tabulate race and ethnicity data together. That information is provided um, in this table as one example, B03002, Hispanic or Latino origin by race. And collapse the level of detail. See what we just saw in the previous table for total population broken out by not Hispanic or Latino and Hispanic or Latino. And then if you wanted to look at the not Hispanic or Latino population as an example, you can drill into the detail and see out of the 267 million people who are not Hispanic or Latino in the United States, they identify in one of these seven race categories. And you can do the same thing for the Hispanic or Latino population. There are approximately 60 million, and out of that 60 million, those folks may belong to one of these seven race categories. Moving on to our next set of examples, um, you can access a lot of information for race and ethnicity. It really pulls the full gamut of tables, but there may be many instances where you just want to focus on one particular group. And uh, there's a variety of ways you can do that on the site in different search options. We're going to walk through two different types of scenarios on how you can go about doing that. Um, but just before we drill into that level of detail to explain this a little bit more fully, you may have noticed as we were working through, there were options to drill into more detail. And you're always looking for a checkbox as a final selection. Words and phrases without checkbox give you more detailed options. So in this particular screenshot, I have topics, race and ethnicity, and then I clicked on the word for Asian, which opens up a panel of some more checkboxes to choose from and some more detailed options to drill into. The thing to know is at the very top, there's a checkbox for Asian, and notice that it just says the word Asian. There are no codes at the beginning or the end of that filter. That particular search option, any of the search tags without codes will give you data from what we call our standard table. And then the other set of codes that have, or the other set of filters that have codes, for example, 012, Asian alone, or 031, Asian alone or in combination, any of those search filters that have codes will give you data from our iterated table. So the point right here is just on a basic level, knowing that search Search options with codes give you information from one set of tables, and search options without codes give you data from another set of tables. If you're ever in doubt which one to choose, I do recommend trying the filters without codes. They're generally at the top of the panel, um, but we're going to provide a little bit more detail on the advantages of these different types of tables and when you might want to use one type of search filter over another. 
on the highest level, just comparing what I'm calling our standard tables that you access with the filters without codes, like Asian, compared to the iterated tables. These are tables that are repeated for different population groups. And you access those with codes of 0, 1, 2 as an example for the Asian alone population. When you look at these side by side, the advantage of the iterated tables is, this, is that they allow you to look at data for detailed population groups in greater uh, granular detail by topic and population group. The standard tables provide you greater coverage in terms of geography, and they give you the most recent available data. Now we're going to focus on the standard table, and you want to use those anytime you're looking for population totals. They're available for population totals for most groups. We just looked at a table that provided population totals for Hispanic, but also some of the detailed groups like Mexican, Puerto Rican as an example. And then if you want characteristics of the basic race and ethnic group category, things like poverty of the Hispanic population as an example, you'll also want to use the standard tables. And again, the reason is that it gives you the most recent data, and you're going to get this information for more geographies. And this is true in terms of um, more types of geography levels included. The standard tables provide data down to the block level for the decennial census and the block group for the American Community Survey. And you're also more likely to just find that the individual geography you selected is more likely to have the data available through these tables. We'll talk more about the reason for this and the population thresholds of the iterated tables later on. Just for your awareness, uh, for the standard tables, these are some of the popular types of products that are considered the standard set of tables uh, for the purposes of this webinar. They include from the American Community Survey the data profiles, detail tables, and subject tables that are released every year. And from the decennial census, summary files one and three, as well as the redistricting data file, those are just some examples of the popular types of standard tables but not necessarily all-inclusive. Don't need to memorize it, but um, when you're looking at the table, here we have a screenshot. You'll look at the product drop-down menu, and it will tell you the type of table that you're in. In this case, we're looking at table B01, 001D, from the 2019 American Community Survey detailed table, which is a type of standard table. When you're working with these types of tables, you'll be looking for your race and ethnic group categories in a few different places. Sometimes they'll appear in the title of the table, such as Asian alone. Sometimes they'll also appear in the universe statement. Here we can see people who are Asian alone. And in other cases, they'll simply appear in the data rows of the table. We just looked at a table earlier on the live site that showed Asian alone in one of the rows. And finally, just for your awareness and information, uh, you may notice some table IDs that end in A through I. These are tables that are repeated for basic race and ethnic group categories within the standard set of tables. Uh, just know that um, for, for the table IDs ending in A through G, you'll notice that that corresponds to the seven race categories that we showed at the first slide, where 100% of the population falls into one of these seven categories. And then there are some additional subcategories provided for popular ways of looking at Hispanic origin. Those table IDs end in A or I, or uh, H or I, depending on whether you're looking at the Centennial Census or American Community Survey, and they would give you data for the white alone population who is not Hispanic or Latino or the Hispanic or Latino population. So with that background, let's go ahead and start looking at how we can drill into a single population group. Specifically, we're going to look at how can I find the set of tables that provide population totals and characteristics of the Asian population. And with that total set of tables, where is the table that shows sex by age breakout of Asian in the United States? Going back to the live site. I'm going to click the U.S. Census logo in the upper left. And you always just want to click that to start fresh and take you back to the landing page. 
And then I'm going to click on the link once again that says Advanced Search. So we want to set a tables for the Asian population. We'll click on Topics, Race, and Ethnicity. And you should probably guess we'll click on Asian. Since it doesn't have a checkbox, we'll get more detailed options to choose from on the right-hand side. And anytime you want totals or characteristics of a basic category like Asian, you can simply check the first box at the top of the table. Next, we'll click Search in the lower right and Tables in the upper left. In our last search for race and ethnicity, we saw almost 2,000 data tables to choose from. Here, we've narrowed it down to just 241 different tables. You can scroll through this list and find population totals for the Asian as well as characteristics for instance, health insurance, income, and educational attainment. For our purposes, we were interested in sex by age. That happens to be the very first table at the top that we're already clicked into. So we can just look to the right-hand side and see the total Asian population in the United States broken out by males in detailed age categories, as well as females who are Asian alone in their detailed age categories. And going back to the slide here, to move on to our second example, that was an instance of looking at population totals and kind of basic characteristics of a group. You may be interested in other characteristics as well as ways that you can fine tune your results even further. So you're not looking at 241 tables. Uh, for this example, we're gonna look at how many people of Hispanic or Latino origin are living in poverty in Springfield, Illinois. So again, this is an example of characteristic of a basic ethnic group category. So we'll go to the site, we'll click the U.S. Census logo in the upper left, and we'll go to the advanced search. And you can choose different order of how you want to select your filters. I usually recommend starting with whatever's most important, and in some cases that may be your population group. So I'm going to click on Topics race, and ethnicity. And you'll notice Hispanic or Latino. And again, we just want the overall Hispanic or Latino, so we'll use the first option at the top that doesn't have any codes. Once we click the box, we'll see it's at the bottom of our screen as a selected filter. Next, I'll go ahead and choose poverty which is also an example of a topic. You'll see once you scroll over to the left, income and poverty. And I see the word poverty, and I'll check the box at the top that says poverty. You may not always be 100% sure which one you should choose, make your best guess, and if you're not getting the results you expect, switch it out for a different topic. And then I'll go ahead and specify our geography now. Uh, in the previous examples, we looked at getting data for the United States, mainly because we want to focus on how to find the race data. I don't want to go through too many complex ways of looking at geography, um, but you can specify geographies in your searches as well. Springfield is a city or town, which the Census Bureau typically classifies as a place. So we'll click Geography, Place. And then just follow the prompts, clicking Illinois. It gives us the first 100 places in Illinois, but you'll notice there's a search icon in the upper right-hand side of this panel. Once you click it, you'll be able to start typing. Here I'm going to type Springfield. And even if you haven't loaded the scroll all the way to that point, you'll be able to quickly check the box for Springfield City, Illinois. And notice it's been added as a selected filter. So we have both of our topics, our population group, poverty, and our geography. Once we're happy, we'll click search in the lower right and tables in the upper left. And just by adding those two additional criteria, poverty and a geography, we've really narrowed it down to a quite manageable list of results, just nine tables to look through. The very first table has exactly what it is that we're looking for with the most recent data available 
because we use the standard tables for the 2019 American Community Survey, looking at this table on the right-hand side of our screen for poverty status in the past 12 months by sex, by age. We can see in Springfield there were approximately 2,960 people who are Hispanic or Latino for whom poverty status is determined. And out of that population, there were 558 Hispanic or Latino people living in poverty. Okay, so now that we kind of look at how you can find data for basic race and ethnic group categories, there may be many situations where you want to look at data for more detailed population groups. At the Census Bureau, we have data for detailed population groups. You can look at population totals and characteristics. Some examples of detailed groups are categories like Japanese or Korean, which are a subset of the Asian, Polynesian, an example of a subset of Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander, and Cherokee, Navajo Nation, Mexican, Puerto Rican, just to name a few different examples from a variety of types of race and ethnic groups. Anytime that you want characteristics of these groups, you'll want to make sure that you're using the checkboxes that have codes with them. That's going to give you data from the iterated tables. Iterated tables are listed here on the screen from the American Community Survey. They're from the selected population profiles from the ACS one-year estimates, as well as two sets of products that are released once every five years, the selected population tables and American Indian Alaska Native tables. And from the decennial census, your iterated products are summary files two and four, as well as the American Indian an Alaska Native summary file, and demographic profiles. There's a variety to choose from. You don't need to memorize them all. They will appear in the product drop-down menu at the top hand of the table. And uh, if you're not sure which one to use and you're interested in AIAN, or American Indian Alaska Native data, if you're looking for the most detailed American Indian Alaska Native tribes, you'll want to make sure to select the types of tables that have American Indian Alaska Native in the title of the data set. Another indication that you are in an iterated product besides the product drop-down menu is the way that these population groups appear in the table themselves. You'll notice before in the standard tables, they were in the table title, universe statement, or rows of the table. In your iterated products, they appear as columns in your particular table. And the columns that you see in your table are based directly on the population filters that you choose in the advanced search. Here you can see I've chosen the filter for Hispanic or Latino and for Mexican. And when I go to pull up this selected population profile, there's a column for Hispanic or Latino and a column for Mexican. And we kind of talked about this earlier, essentially the advantage of these iterated tables just to hit it home, is that it provides greater coverage for detailed population groups. It's the primary source of characteristics, and for some detailed population groups, it's the only source for population total data from the Census Bureau. So let's look at how we can really drill into the greatest level of detail by population group. In our first example, what is the percent of the Korean population with a bachelor's degree or higher in the United States and in Illinois. Going over here to the live site, we'll click the U.S. Census logo in the upper left, and we'll go to, as you guessed it, the advanced search. And I'm going to choose my population group first, clicking on topics, race and ethnicity, Asian, I don't see anything here yet that says Korean. I'm going to click on Detailed Asian Alone. And then I start to see some detailed groups. All of these show codes at the beginning. And as you scroll through, eventually you'll see a label that says 023 Korean Alone. I'll check the box and make sure it's been added to the bottom of my screen as a selected filter. Now we'll go ahead and add for educational attainment. 
just another topic tag under education, and then educational attainment. Once we're happy with our selection, I want to pull up data first for the default for the United States, so I'm not going to specify a geography. I'll click search in the lower right and tables in the upper left. And right off the bat, we'll see on the left-hand side, the first data is from the selected population profile, the annual, annually released information from the American Community Survey. On the right-hand side, I see it provides my geography, as well as the population group in the column, because it's an iterated table. And we did specify educational attainment. I don't see it here at the top of the table but it does match the table results, so that gives me an indication that I probably need to scroll through this table and look at the different sections. I see things like marital status, school enrollment, and educational attainment. This particular table covers quite a vast variety of topics all in one view. You just have to scroll through it. So this tells me that the Korean alone population, based on the 2019 ACS one-year estimates, was a little over a million, and that's the population specifically that's 25 years and over. Out of that number, we can scroll through and view the different breakouts of looking at educational attainment data. We'll see bachelor's degree or higher, 58.9%. Now, if I wanted to get this data for Illinois, there are a variety of options throughout the site to add additional search filters, geography and other criteria as you go along. You'll notice on the left-hand side of this table results page is a button that says filter. I'm going to click that, and you'll see something you're very familiar with. We'll click where it says geography, and this is essentially what we were working with in the advanced search. I see a geography level for state. I'll click state, and then scroll down till I get to Illinois. We'll check the box for Illinois, and as we scroll up, we'll notice it's been there. And then the last thing you need to do to get out of this view is just look in the upper right. There's a chevron that says done. You don't have to go about selecting your geography through this particular filter button. It's just an additional option. When you go through this process, you'll notice that this table says data not available. Try another search. This means that the table doesn't have information for the particular combination of population group and geography I selected due to the population threshold. So it's not available for Illinois Korean alone population. It may be available for Illinois for other population groups, and it is available for the Korean alone population in the United States and other geographies as well. We'll talk more about those thresholds in a moment. The good news is that there are other types of iterated products that have uh, less strict population thresholds, and they're just a click away. So you can see right underneath that, B15002, it's one of those special products that are released once every five years. So this is based off the 2015 vintage of the American Community Survey five-year estimates. It's not quite as recent as the other data we were hoping to get but it is available for the level of detail for our geography, Illinois, and our population group, Korean alone. And in this table, you can scroll through and look at educational attainment for the Korean alone population in Illinois. For the male, it gives very detailed information. If you wanted bachelor's degree or higher, you could add up a few different categories. And then it repeats this for female as well. So this just gives you the flexibility for very detailed information that's based on five years' worth of data collection, and you can add categories together as needed. Moving on here to walk through our final example on the live site, how does home ownership compare for American Indians whose race is Gila River Indian community compared to the larger Pima tribal grouping? based on the 2010 census. Another example of looking at characteristics of detailed race groups. Here we'll go to the live site, click the U.S. Census logo in the upper left, 
and visit the advanced search. In this example, I do happen to know the type of data set that I want to pull this information from. It's from the 2010 census. You'll click on surveys on the left-hand side. There isn't a generic option for decennial census, but as you scroll through, you'll see that there are almost 30 different data sets you can click on that start with DEC for decennial census. And I happen to know I want DEC, American Indian and Alaska Native Summary File. You may not always know which one you want, but just to point out, this option is there if you do. Going back to topics, we'll go ahead and specify those two American Indian groups that we want under race and ethnicity, American Indian and Alaska Native. And we get some options at the top for overall data, I want a detailed American Indian tribe, so I'm going to click on American Indian. And first, it's going to give me some different options to choose for the tribal grouping. Gila River is part of the Pima tribal grouping. So I'm going to scroll down to P and click on Pima. And here we can see some of the final selections that we're able to make. Right off the bat at the top is 12K. Gila River Indian community of the Gila River Indian Reservation alone, population group G84, and then Pima tribal grouping alone. And you can see from the population group code that Pima tribal grouping is a larger category of American Indian tribes that does include Gila River Indian community and other detailed American tribes in one overall tribal grouping. And then the last thing that we may want to specify just to fine tune our results is home ownership. We see the topics filter on the left hand side for housing, owner, renter, householder characteristics, and owner tenure, owner renter tenure. Once we've checked the boxes, we will confirm our data set, our owner renter topic, and our two population groups. When you're happy, you'll click search in the lower right and tables in the upper left. Now, it's giving us the most recent data, the 2010 census. Since we did specify the decennial census data product. And the first table, 10 year by presence and age of own children, maybe a little more detailed than what we need. You can scroll and click on different tables, or you may just be able to collapse some categories and get a high level look at the information. So from here, we can see for the universe occupied housing units, there were a total of 3,324 occupied housing units who the householder is Gila River Indian community rates alone. And out of that total, the 3,324, 1,904 are owner occupied units. So about 57% of occupied housing units where the householders, Gila River Indian community, are homeowners. And you can see that percentage is higher if you compare it to the Pima tribal grouping. Going back to our slides here, just want to wrap up with some common questions that we get and then make sure that we get to answer your individual questions. One common question, why do the race and ethnic groups not add up to 100%? We usually get this question when users are trying to add up data from the full race group category to the full Hispanic or Latino category. As a reminder, U.S. Census Bureau collects race and ethnicity according to OMB standards, and they are two distinct concepts. Another common question, why am I getting data not available message? We saw this in our live demonstration. It means that most likely, population thresholds have not been met. We'll talk about that in a moment. Another way that you may see this play out is you select more than one population group. Here you can see I've selected Chinese alone and Burmese alone and pulled up the iterated table for the state of California. You'll notice this screenshot only shows one column for Chinese alone and no column for Burmese alone. This is an indication that the population threshold for Burmese in California didn't meet the requirements for the selected population profile. 
there are a variety of types of minimum population requirements based on the total population or the population of your selected race group, and that population threshold may be applied to the United States geography overall or the geography you selected. In addition to minimum population requirements, some surveys based on sample of the population, especially the American Community Survey, may have unweighted sample case requirements and that's based on responses to the survey. So I'm just going to walk through sometimes explaining this with one example, focusing on the ACS one-year selected population profiles and say what this means. The population threshold for the ACS one-year selected population profile, there must be at least 500,000 total people in the geography you select. So we wanted this particular table in our live demonstration for Korean alone in Illinois. So there had to have been at least 500,000 total people in Illinois in order for this table to be available. In addition, there also had to have been at least 65,000 Korean alone people in Illinois in order for this table to be available. There also had to have been at least 50 Korean alone responses to the survey in Illinois in order for this table to be available. If one of these thresholds are not met, the table will not be available for your selected geography and population group. This is really why I uh, recommend if you're in doubt on which product to start with or which filter to choose, to use the ones that do not have codes. With that said, there are a variety of iterated tables to choose from with different types of population thresholds. You could kind of have a whole webinar on these different types of products. The good news is that I've included links here if you'd like to drill into that level of detail for any particular survey or program from the ACS or decennial census, you can click these links and then drill into different products and view the specific requirements for those different products if you're interested. Another common question, how do I get data for in combination race groups? Here you can see I've marked the box for Japanese alone or in combination with one or more races. And when I go to the table, it gives me data for the total population. There's nothing that you're doing wrong if you're checking these alone or in combination search boxes. There's a defect on the site. And the workaround for that is to use the higher level all available detailed uh, check boxes. So if you go back one level in the navigation, you see 04, all available detailed Asian races. That's going to give you data for more population groups than you probably want, but you'll be able to scroll to the right of the table in order to access what you're looking for. Again, this is all just for a current defect, and we're working to resolve the check boxes so they work as expected. Another thing you may be interested in is business data by race and ethnicity. The tips that we showed today are primarily for accessing demographic data through the American Community Survey and Decennial Census. We do have two surveys that cover the race and ethnicity of business owners. If you'd like to access that data, the best way is to simply select it from the surveys filter. For instance, if you want the most recent data, select the survey filter for ANN, Annual Business Survey, and you can look at the data available. And finally, we know that you all are interested in race and ethnicity for the 2020 census. We wanted to provide a link to a recorded webinar that walks through information about collecting and tabulating this data specifically for the 2020 census and some contact information in case you have any follow-up questions about this particular topic. The focus of today's webinar was to access data that's currently available on data.census.gov, so those questions are a little bit out of scope for what we will be able to cover during the Q&A, um, but did want to make sure that we highlight this resource that's available. With that, operator, can we start opening up for questions? Yes. If you'd like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your phone, unmute, and record your name. Again, that is star 1, and it'll be a few moments for the questions to come in. Thank you. And as we're waiting for the first question, did want to let you all know that everything we're doing on data.census.gov is based on user feedback. So you 
If you have thoughts on how we can make the site work better for you, please let us know by emailing sedsci.feedback at census.gov. In addition, we have a variety of educational materials that are available to you if you visit the link in the upper left or simply click the Help button on the landing page of data.census.gov you'll be able to dive into recorded short videos, full-length webinars, PDFs with step-by-step -step instructions and screenshots, as well as release notes and news for the site. Our first question, and, your line is open. Um, yeah, so my question is, um, can you explain how the data for Black, African Americans, um, and African Americans is, is desegregated? I didn't hear that discussed. Okay. And then I guess my follow-up question would be, if there is no desegregated data for African Americans, is the U.S. Census Bureau working on transparency for that data? So the Black or African American is one category in the Census Bureau. We saw in some of the tables that we looked at for Black or African American as part of one of those minimum seven categories. And um, just looking through the filters here. Well, yeah, that, that was my question. Is it, is it broken out? I think it's just one group. So it's not so, yeah, it's considered, it's considered one group, and that's in accordance with OMB standards. And then one thing that I didn't mention specifically for black, but in general across population groups, you could look at data for the population that identifies as black or African American alone, or you could look at data for the population that is black or African American and maybe identifies in addition with one or more races these are the primary ways that you would be able to access data. Um, beyond that, uh, the focus of the webinar is showing you how to access the data available. I would recommend some of the contact information if you have follow-up about the data collection and categorization process. Yeah, sure. Um, can you give me your email? I know you – or the yes. email again. I know I'll, you stated it, but if you could spell it um, out, that would be – better for me. Thank you. Up here on the screenshot um, as we move on to the next question. And I'll oh, up. yeah. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm calling in. I'm not able to see the screenshot. It won't let me for some reason. I'm only able to sure. call so in. If, if you could email it to sedsci, C-E-D-S-C-I dot feedback. Again, that's C-E-D-S-C-I dot feedback at census.gov. Okay. Thank Operator, you. other questions? Yes, sir. Um, our next question, your line is open. Uh, my question is uh, kind of actually a follow-up to the previous question. Um, I was listening to you describing the different requirements for a, a group of people to be able to make the profile, I guess you were saying, about uh, for the data analysis, and I was wondering about the black American descendants of chattel slaves, uh, seeing as at one point in America's history uh, there were different categorizations for defining a specific uh, lineage of, of, of race uh, using terms like mulatto and uh, colored and negroid and things like that. Um, I'm just wondering if the census is going to go back to giving that specific lineage a subcategory or a detailed category under the broader scope of African American or Black American? Yeah, so this, I don't really have any additional information to share with you beyond uh, kind of those two filters that I showed up on screen earlier about accessing data for Black or African American alone or in combination with one or more groups. The reason is that the data, the focus of the webinar is on how to access the data currently available on our site, which is for the 2000 census up through the 2019 American Community Survey. If you have additional questions 
about historically how this information was collected or its comparability over time or how it may be collected in the future, I'd also uh, invite you to email us in, in order to connect you with the correct folks at the Census Bureau to answer that. I'm, I'm sorry, before you push me on, I'm, do you know the correct department I should be talking to about things like this? Because I feel like that specific lineage of people have, have been here since America's inception, and I feel like just like you mm -hmm. described the Hispanic groups having their subgroups as in uh, Mexican or Honduras, I feel like we should also have our subgroup under uh, African American because it's become such an aggregated group, uh, incorporating groups that come from other countries as well. I hear what you're saying. Um, what you can do is email us. The email address is provided on the screen here, and we can connect you with the right folks offline, but we want to allow time for questions on people that have questions about how to access the information that's currently available. Operator, maybe take the next question. Yes, sir. Our next question, your line is open. Thank you very much um, for taking my, my question. I was wondering if there's a way that you could quickly show us how to download uh, these tables as well as any maps that we could um, generate. I know there's a tab up at the top that says maps, um, and so I'm interested in being able to look at the data as well as a map uh, showing the data. Um, can you demonstrate that real quick? Um, I can go through on a high level. I'm in the full table view here, just so you can see I pulled up kind of a random table. Uh, there is Excel and there's download. So what I'll say about this on a high level is Excel will give you output that looks similar to the table view on screen. And download is going to give you something that's maybe not easy to read as a person, but would be machine readable. If you wanted to sort this information, let's say you accessed it for a long list of geographies and you wanted to do some sorting or data manipulation, you would want to use download. Um, in terms of map, I can just show you really basic, but what I will say is that we uh, have webinar that covers mapping and uh, we intend to have additional webinars on selected topics, so I would I urge you to continue to look at our webinar offerings in the future in case we decide to do something specifically aimed at matching at mapping. Here I've just selected a larger grouping and then um, of geographies. You can map out a wide variety of geographies if you wanted to do something like the county level, census tract, block group, zip code areas as just some examples. The trickiest part usually once you get to the map is just choosing the data variable and you just click that drop-down menu. Any particular data row in the table is something that you could choose to map out, and you just read the label and click between the different um, data variables in order to create a map on the site. So that's kind of a quick couple-minute demonstration, and I would urge you to check out some of our recorded webinars and upcoming webinars for more detail. Okay, so I guess in other webinars, uh, we're taught how to export these guys out, uh, these maps out into maps <laughs> or, or shape files or um, DWG, DSF, we would, that nature. We would show how to map on the site itself, um, and, and some of them do touch on resources that may help you if you wanted to map in your own software such as GI. Okay, all right, for exporting purposes. Okay, all right, thank you. You're welcome. Your line is open. Yeah, there, I have two, two related questions. Um, I, and they have to do with uh, probably decisions that are at the OMB level, uh, but I want to know if you guys make any recommendations on them. One is uh, the categorization of Hispanic as not a race, as an ethnicity which requires those of us who use your database to always go back <coughs> to <coughs> sorting to get non-Hispanic white, non-Hispanic black, et cetera, to avoid having a double count. And I'm sure you, you guys are aware of that. Why not just categorize Hispanics as a race or recommend that OMB does that? Because if you look at how people 
how Hispanics respond to the race question, you see a huge number respond other rather than a, a race. In other words, they're, they're thinking, I would think pretty clearly that they are a race and that we ought to put that there. You also see a tremendously low number. If you look at it, it's under 3% nationally of Hispanics that will self-identify as black, which doesn't seem to be uh, consistent with just observational, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, data. Um, so it, it just seems to me like it would make so much more sense not to have this cumbersome category of ethnicity for Hispanic people. My sec I don't know if you want to go into that one first, but my second question is about the huge category of Asians, uh, which, uh, you know, lumps together many people who are racially very different. For example, South Asians from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh uh, are very clearly different racially from East Asians from China or Japan. Uh, Likewise, there are people who could claim to be Asian who came from Iran or even Israel because those countries are in Asia. Uh, I don't know uh, whether you've had thoughts about breaking apart the Asian racial category rather than having people do what I see you're doing now, uh, which is go to the Asian breakdown. Uh, it's just that Asian is just seems to be an enormous polyglot. <clears throat> yeah, for your question, anything about categorization, why something's categorized a certain way is beyond the expertise of myself and what we can cover in this webinar. So all I can really say in terms of your question is if you needed assistance, it sounds like you know how to access detailed Hispanic or Latino by race, but I just want to point it out for folks that are on the call that may find themselves in a similar situation and don't know how to access this information. When you go to the Hispanic or Latino category, you will see detailed Hispanic or Latino by race. And then you can see some of the things uh, that were being described on the call where you can access the information broken out for race in Hispanic or Latino. Our purpose for the webinar today and my area of expertise and what I can speak to is simply on how to access the data and this would be the pathway to take. I can't speak to um, the categorization of any groups for Hispanic or Asian. I would encourage you to write into us and we can forward your information to the appropriate subject matter experts. Uh, you don't go back and, and ask the question of OMB to say this doesn't make any sense? My area of expertise is data.census.gov and helping folks I hear access I hear the data. Okay. I don't know what the process is and can't speak to it. Thank you for your question. Operator, do we have other questions? Yes, sir. We have two questions. Our next question, if your line is open. A good afternoon. The line is open. Good afternoon. Yes, I want to find out how far do you go back in the ancestry. Say, um, Caribbean ancestry, do you go back and maybe up four, five, six generations down, or just one or two? Sure. Um, so for ancestry, we covered today race and ethnicity, um, but uh, we do definitely have information on ancestry as well. Under populations and people, under the advanced search, and then under ancestry, you'll see the different categories that are selectable. So these will take you to some of the iterated products, or you could just simply click ancestry in order to um, in order to get data from the standard products on this. What I would recommend for your case is potentially actually looking at the form itself. I don't know off the top of my head how the question is worded for ancestry, since it's, but one of the ways that it's collected right now is through the American Community Survey. So if you go to census.gov slash ACS and then click about ACS, and then why we ask each question, and this is a link that we can 
share in the chat as well. Um, or you can email us. You'll see Ancestry, and you'll be able to click here and view the question as it appears on the form in order to get more information. So it's simply ask what is this person's ancestry or ethnic origin. This is from the president of a full American community survey. So this is the question based on self-identification. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for your question. Operator. Yes, our um, last question. question, your line is open. Hi there. So I'm the um, develop, <clears throat> development director, and I'm wondering how to make this user-friendly as possible um, to analyze. Um, we serve lar mostly the Hispanic community in Northern Virginia, and um, how we break down the vast category of people who are Hispanic, um, whether it's ethnicity or country of origin, and also if you have any suggestions for how to get a whole staff team trained on, on this in a way that um, we can easily access and analyze the data to use in our reporting and our proposals. Yeah, thanks for the question. Do you actually mind repeating the question for me? Okay, so the first part of it is, um, how do we analyze the Hispanic um, community we serve, largely Hispanic folks, um, you know, based on differentiating maybe like their country of origin? And secondly, how do you suggest that a nonprofit gets up to speed on the data that they need for accuracy in proposal writing and data analysis. Yeah, so great question. Just to clarify, because one thing you touched on were the different, you said country of origin, so I just kind of want to make the distinction there. There is information on ethnicity and the Hispanic or Latino filter, I guess, if you make it as simple as possible, uh, definitely hit home how this checkbox at the top is probably the most useful starting place, at least. If folks are feeling overwhelmed, I would say that would be a helpful tip that you could pass along is always check the Hispanic or Latino box at the top. And then hopefully you can also add in additional details about these additional groups with codes that they can get information for. These provide detailed ethnic categories for uh, things like Mexican, Puerto Rican, and many of the other groups listed here. But in addition to this, just to be clear, there's also information from the Census Bureau based on place of birth or country of birth. Uh, so just know that there is a distinction in that information, um, and, and that information would be under the populations and people, native and foreign born. So do you know that we collect data on both, and there is a distinction between ethnicity and place of birth or country of birth. And then in terms of just staying up to date on the latest information, this webinar is being recorded. We have the help button on the landing page that takes to some educational resources, and we continue to put out additional resources. So these are things that you could share with your staff. And that actually leads into one of the things that I wanted to close with as well, um, is that we do customized trainings from across the Europe. So here I'm putting up a slide from the Data Dissemination Specialist. The training hub for the Census Bureau is census.gov slash academy. And at the bottom of this slide is contact information if you want a local or specialized training according to your needs. There are data dissemination specialists across the country, and they specifically provide free training. So if you're interested in that, just shoot an email to census.askdata at census.gov or 1-844-ASK-DATA, and they would be happy to consider a request to uh, have a specialized training specifically on Hispanic for your particular data needs and touch on the things that you use the most. And I guess, I know with that last question, I also wanted to wrap up with some final information is that we do have a webinar evaluation. So we try to make these as useful as possible. We would appreciate if you all can 
fill out the evaluation and let us know what went, what went well and how we can make these offerings better in the future to meet your data needs. Thank you all again for tuning in, and we will look forward to seeing you again on a future webinar. That concludes today's conference. All participants may disconnect. Speakers, please stand by.